Ivy Valentine subscribes to Mark Yoon, so should you. Enjoy your treat! So for a very long time on this channel, for almost as long as Soul Calibur 6 has been out actually, I've been getting requests that I'm actually going to complete today. But I wanted to get into the differences and the similarities between the char uh, characters timelines versus their present timeline. And we're actually going to do this character by character. This is a lot helped out and done with uh, research from Layla, who is one of my moderators on the channel, and she is also a member of the Yoon fam. So I will link her channel in her description in the description box. You can go check her out. But uh, thank you, Layla, and you're gonna hear her thoughts on this after. Now the way this is gonna set up is I'm gonna talk about their old timeline. I'm gonna talk about their new timeline. Then we're gonna go into like my thoughts on the differences of the timeline, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of examples. So hopefully this is a fun series, and at the end of this video, go over to the community tab, cause you guys will be the ones to vote on which character I do next and cover next week. So that's gonna be up to you, and it's a good way for us to actually do this together, and then comment on that also, because I will share the comments at the end of the next video. Without further ado, let's just jump right into this video, and the first character we are covering is none other than Heishiro Mitsurugi. So let's just jump right in. The old timeline goes as follows, which is again from Soul Calibur 1 up through Soul Calibur 5. Soul Calibur 6 is a new timeline, so let's start. Son of farmers who takes up the sword after his parents' and siblings' deaths, the Tanagashima is invented and Mitsurugi feels threatened, motivating him to find Soul Edge so that he can defeat the Tanagashima travels around Japan and then leaves Japan to find it, comes back to Japan empty-handed, defeats the Tanagashima anyway, defeats and kills the Shugen Kokonoe in duel, hears rumors about Nightmare, which cause him to want to travel outside of Japan once more. He does mercenary work overseas, then loses Nightmare and then Soul Edge's trial. In the new timeline, Son of Farmers, who takes up the sword after his parents and siblings' deaths, Tanagashima is invented and Mitsurugi feels threatened, motivating him to find Soul Edge so that he can defeat the Tanagashima. He travels around Japan and then leaves Japan to find it. He comes back to Japan empty-handed and there he meets Setsuka and defeat, defends her from townspeople who are harassing her. He learns of the Kokonoe clan, Shinden Tsushima Ryu, Batui Juitsu, through watching her fight. Is pitted in a tournament against the Tanshigama and loses. Seeks out, meets, and learns from Shugen Kokonoe and then duels him. He shatters Shungen's blade during their duel, and Mitsurugi learns that he was set up to tire Shungen out so that, him, so that the Kokonoe clan could assassinate Shungen. Shungen sacrifices himself to save Mitsurugi and hears rumors about Nightmare, which calls him to want to travel outside of Japan once more. He meets Edgemaster who sends him on a wild goose chase and intentionally causes the trial to go cold. Alludes later on, Tagashima is not a challenge for him anymore and taken into the Astral Chaos by Ishka Akt who wants to test his strength shown to get stronger in the astral chaos as opposed to other humans who grow weaker, begins to remark that you could become one of us before a mystery voice slash algal interrupts her. You who would turn to chaos to power mortal body, do you desire to fight again with me? Mitsu says that he can't hear the voice, but Mitsu gets expelled from the astral chaos to the Ming Dynasty era of China. Will you choose world domination or will you continue the warrior's path? Transcendent fate, return to chaos, my answer is. And then Algol is the one actually saying all that. So now we're gonna get into the comparisons of the timelines. So this is going up for what actually happened so far. And if you wanna actually follow along, you can do the character's individual soul chronicles to get all of this, especially that later part. You are actually required to purchase season pass two of the DLC in order to get all of that, especially the stuff with Ishka Oct and Algol. But uh, I will actually show it at the end here, but I encourage you to go pick that up just so you can actually see it for yourself if you don't already have it. In the old timeline, Mitsurugi's lore was more or less on the simple and straightforward side. He was the son of farmers and was motivated to take up the sword when his parents and siblings passed away. Having felt threatened by the advent of the rifle, uh, he begins to seek out Soul Edge with hopes of it becoming strong enough to help him defeat the Tangashima. While out, he enc encountered Huang and Li Long on, a separate, on separate occasions, but was unsuccessful in finding Soul Edge. He went home and entered a tournament and was pitted against the Tangashima and was able to defeat it with his own blade. He then set out to find Soul Edge yet again after hearing rumors about Nightmare. The trail then went cold, and it wouldn't be until 1590 when he found a lead. At an undisclosed time before this, he killed Shungen Kunganoe, which created an enemy out of Setsuka. Contrast this with the new timeline, he comes from the same background as he did in the original timeline, and his motivation to pick up the sword are the same. He also seems to keep the overall goal of wanting to defeat the Tanganshima with swordplay. The differences arise in a few areas. For one, he meets Setsuka, who inspired the relic stance we see in Mitsurugi's gameplay. 
Seeing her fight, which is what makes him want to find Shugen Kokonoe. After this is when he receives the gunshot wound from losing from the Tanganshima. Mitsurugi is more motivated than ever and to get stronger and seeks to have a duel with Shugen. But unlike in the last timeline, this duel was a setup by the Kokonoe clan to get Shungen tired enough to kill him. Mitsurugi and Shungen fight them off together, but Shungen ends up sacrificing himself for Mitsurugi. However, the outcome of this is the same, and Setsuka still attributes Shungen's death to Mitsurugi and still decides to pursue revenge. After this is when Mitsurugi hears about the rumors of Nightmare and how he wields Soul Edge. On his way to Europe to find Nightmare, he meets Edge Master, who sends him on a wild goose chase and ultimately causes the trail to go cold, on purpose in order to deter Mitsurugi from finding Soul Edge. Years later, Mitsurugi is still on the hunt for Soul Edge, and is also on the hunt for strong warriors to do battle with to make himself stronger. He makes a passing comment about the guns no longer being a challenge for him, meaning that he has worked hard and accomplished his initial goal. It was then that he is taken inside the Astral Chaos by Ishka Oct, who then wanted to test his strength. It was commented that he got stronger in the Astral Chaos, whereas opposed to other humans actually grew weaker. She then begins to say, you could have become one of us, but is interrupted by a disembodied voice of Algol. Though Mitsurugi cannot understand the voice, Algol says, you who turn chaos to power, mortal body, do you desire to fight with me again? Ishka Oct sends Mitsurugi back to the physical plane to the Ming Dynasty era of China, where we see Algol say, will you choose world domination or you continue on the warrior's path? Transcending fate, returning to chaos, my answer is. It's clear that Mitsurugi's story has been altered in this new timeline while still retaining elements of the old one we already know. The question then become, becomes, how much will it change and how much will stay the same in this new timeline? And I'll actually show the timeline on screen right now while we're talking. But the thing that I wanted to reiterate is this is a different timeline. And yes, things have started down similar paths. And we have talked about this before. Mitsurugi is no different. The things that happened in the old timeline from the starting point, anything that happened in Soul Edge and is mentioned from Soul Calibur 1 is actually still canon to this new timeline. But going forward, we're going to see slight variations and slight changes that pick up as we go along. So you're going to see kind of like a graph where the old timeline goes steady like this and then we see the new timeline go steady at the start also and then veer off into its own completely new branch of history which uh, we have yet to see. This is obvious based on the fact that we have the Swords and the Shepherds, as which Ishka Ak is actually reaching out, finding strong warriors, and she actually offers Mitsurugi a chance to join them on the Swords and Shepherds. So we have new chances to see old characters in different lights, in different ways. This is why we've talked about other characters in the past of being going down a similar path, but it's going to deter and be different. And all of this is basically just in a way to avoid uh, the plot holes that they didn't like, that they created, or the paths they didn't like they created from Soul Calibur's 4 and 5. So uh, we're going to see the changes get greater and greater uh, as we do. If you want to liken this to anything, you can liken this to like Final Fantasy 7 uh, Remake and Rebirth. How um, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but things that happen in the original games and the original timeline differ from this timeline. And it actually branches out to becoming a completely different story at some point. So and that's basically what I wanted to say based on that. I actually like Mitsurugi's story a little bit better in the new timeline. I feel like they give him a lot more character development and a lot more area to grow. Whereas before, he was kind of just like a wandering like a ronin warrior who like had no idea like where he was going. He just wanted to become stronger, which is like a typical shonen-esque kind of character. I do like that they actually changed that for the new timeline. So we can clearly see that things are ramping up on an amp path. I mean, especially because Ishka Octa, Swords and the Shepherds, and none of those people actually existed. Now, the timeline from before isn't exactly gone and forgotten. This Algol is the same Algol from that timeline. It's the same Algol that we fought in Soul Calibur 4. It's the same Algol that we fought in Soul Calibur 5. This is evident and apparent based on different parts, which we'll get to later on with different characters. But like, for example, we have Sophita's, Sophitia's sister Cassandra. Her Soul Calibur 4 lost version through the Astral Chaos actually meets herself in this current timeline and then goes to tell her about what happened in the prior timeline. So even though we are not following the old timeline and it's no longer canon to this timeline, it still had existed. So in a way, in a very weird and indirect way, the previous timeline is almost considered like the past of this current present timeline. And uh, we still have the future to wave out for that. So we'll see what goes on with that. It has been really interesting to research the differences between the old and new timeline and what those can mean going forward. As I did all this research, I found it to be an interesting question of whether the differences were from 
effect cons or if details were simply being filled in or in Setsuka's case specifically whether we had like a bit of an unreliable narrator situation. I think that going forward we will keep certain elements of the old timeline but I think that ultimately there will be a shift. I think that change to make it that Edge Master gave him a bit of a wild goose chase was not an accident. You know, it might have seemed a little bit goofy in the beginning, uh, maybe like kind of a more lighthearted part of the story, but I think that Edge Master recognizing Mitsurugi's strength off the bat, I think, was actually a very nice precursor to the interest that Algal and the Swords and Shepherds took in Mitsurugi. Um, which is ultimately why he was led away from Soul Edge instead of toward it. You know, we were told before that he killed Shugen, and that's why Setsuka was on her revenge quest. But we see through this story that he actually had like a bit of a friendship with Setsuka in the beginning when uh, he defended her from the people who were harassing her. You know, maybe not necessarily a friendship, but definitely a level of respect. You know, he actually modified his own fight style specifically because of what he saw her capable of doing um and you know shugen guided him and was a a figure that he also respected they had mutual respect for one another and i think that uh, i think that that definitely a different story from what we were used to we thought maybe he like assaulted shugen in the past or I don't know, I don't know, we, we didn't really have very many details about it. You see now that he didn't even do it, He was he's being blamed for it, but, you know. So the question becomes, was that what happened last time? Was Setsuka simply just, were we, were we simply seeing it from Setsuka's perspective and not really from Mitsurugi's? Um, so there's a bit of a, you know, an interesting conversation there. But ultimately, I think that one element we will keep going forward is... Mitsurugi and Setsuka do have an ultimate final showdown and I think that we keep that one because we still see that Setsuka wants to have this revenge quest but also we see something interesting in Mitsurugi and Sh uh, Shugen's battle we see that Mitsurugi actually snaps Shugen's sword and I think that this is a callback to the old timeline because when Mitsurugi and Setsuka had their battle Setsuka did the same thing to Mitsurugi. She snapped his sword, made actually Mitsurugi view Setsuka as the winner of that fight. So I would honestly say that that is both foreshadowing and a callback. So I do think that that battle will still eventually happen. But I think that unlike in the old timeline where Mitsurugi kind of had a bit of a backseat, I think that he will have a bit more to do going forward. The interest that Oct has in Mitsurugi is particularly very interesting to me. Uh, you know, she says a lot of things about how he he grows powerful in Astral Chaos, and then Algal later on actually confirms that by calling him, he calls him uh, he who turns chaos into power. So I think that it will, I think that there's going to be some sort of like a power imbalance and a struggle, you know, both Algal and uh, uh, Oct both want Mitsurugi to join their sides. You know, for what? We haven't seen yet, you know. You might want to speculate that Algal is still a disembodied entity. He doesn't have a body yet, so maybe he wants to possess Mitsurugi. And if Mitsurugi is as powerful with the astral chaos as they say, you know, what does that mean about his ability to wield Soul Edge? Maybe, maybe Oct, who cannot fight in the physical plane without a mortal body to bind to, maybe she wants to make Mitsurugi replace Gabak, who knows? You know, that's where my thoughts on this go. I think that I am very excited to see just how much things will deviate from here because I think that I think that they've set up a very interesting story with him. So thank you so much, Layla, for not only helping with the research and helping put together this series, but also for giving your thoughts and being a part of this series. Um, I do want to give other people the opportunity to help out with these things and not just like reveal myself as the arbiter of everything that is Soul Calibur. Like I do love that this community is one of the stronger communities with one of the less toxic fan bases. So it's really good to um, give each other uh, praise and effort and try to talk about the series together so I'm going to thank her for that and you will see more of her going forward as I said you can find a link to her channel in the description box down below but uh, 
Go vote on the poll for next week. So we're going to have a, a list of four characters every week, and you guys can choose which one goes next. And uh, we're going to rotate that. So the list is going to stay the same with a new character every week until we get through the, all the characters, and we're going to finish the series that way. And I hope you guys like it. Leave a like if you did, and comment down below what you think about this new series, and follow me on Discord so we can actually check this stuff out together. And as I always say, guys, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.